Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Factorio. Today is the day. This is the one where we do loads and loads of stuff. I've got so much I want to get done in this episode and I've been doing stuff in between as well. You can see some stuff going on over here. Let's talk about what I have done. If I press M you can see that I have taken out a lot of alien bases around here. Let's actually uh, zoom in a little bit and have a look around. You can see that over here I've got a wall going all the way across and over there as well. Need to build one just on the corner there. And yeah, I went round and I took all of them out. And it didn't take me that long. It took me a long time because there was a lot of it. But I've got a new technique for uh, taking out these bases. In fact, it's the same technique, just that I tend to completely and utterly charge in there. And so in this episode, one thing we must do is show that on camera so you can see how effective you can be taking these things out. So an important part of that, though, was this upgrade that I've made to the armor. I now have a portable fusion reactor. We did the research for that, and then I crafted this thing. And it provides me with so much energy that when I take damage, I instantly start recharging. So we have less shields, uh, but with the solar panels and all of these, we have just uh, an immense amount of power. It is very, very cool. So as well as that, I have dismantled the entire previous base. As you can see, our line for copper and iron goes along the top here and round into this bit. And now we're going to build the furnace array that points into it. As well as that, I've also done um, some research for the final level of military, which gave us these piercing shotgun shells that do a lot more damage. Uh, we've also been upgrading the shotgun shells right here. In fact, I'd like to start on that one. That's going to be the last upgrade for that. Takes a lot of potions, but our system uh, kind of keeps up with it. We need the new furnace thing to get this going. So as well as the furnaces and actually getting this system up online, uh, we want to do some other things, but I guess when we get the furnaces on, we're going to be looking at our system while we do research, seeing where the shortages are, where things need to be increased and improved, etc., and getting this thing running. Then after that, what I'd like to do is add a few more things to our production line and then create kind of like a base area where we have all the kind of things that are produced and don't need to be put onto lines. So that would be things like the electric poles and the lamps, like we had in the previous one, except they're all kind of muddled uh, in with everything else. And this would be like a proper area where we can walk into, we can grab all of those things from chests. I imagine it in like a U-shape, something like that, with all the materials going around the outside and the chests on the inside. And we'll be able to store things like this over here. I've got tons of stuff stored up that was just filling up my inventory, and it's just stuff from where we've taken over, uh, or taken apart the old base. So that is kind of the plan. I want to get as much of that done as possible. So let's talk about this furnace array over here. I've spent a lot of time trying to design something that's very compact and also efficient. There is something important that I wanted to achieve here. I wanted to have both sides of the track filled down uh, going into the middle, into this bit right here, and that's the same for the iron that will be on either side, so that the furnaces can kind of put it on as fast as possible on either side. So we will be trying to produce this stuff as fast as the system can take it, and because the system is a double-sided track, that means we need to output to both sides at the same time. So if we had the furnaces on just one side of the track, and then we had a splitter somewhere to balance it, we'd actually be throttled by it coming in at that speed. Now all of this is probably going to back up onto the track, so as soon as it starts getting used, it means that these furnaces are going to be putting them straight back onto either side of the tracks. Then on the opposite sides over here, we're going to have two lines for the ores, and we're going to use splitters to distribute them into the furnaces and this way we're keeping everything very very compact as you can see in terms of width like this and um, so the split is going to put it into that block right there well it's not a block but you know that tile or space and this inserter is going to be able to take it and put it in to the furnace now if you have it on the other side if you have this thing behind and taking off of it it doesn't work however when you have it in front like that it does actually take from that segment of the splitter so that way we can put it in then the one at the top takes it out onto this track which points into that one and puts it on one side of the track. Now this is where the ores are going to go and they are actually going to come from a single track like this and they're going to be split up so that's going to kind of throttle how much it can do however when the ores are full up on these sides of the tracks they are actually going to act as a sort of buffer so that means um, that when the demand comes in the ore will be able to supply the furnaces with enough to keep them putting the same amount going through you know the same speed that the materials can move across the belt is what I'm aiming for there. And our research is done. I think I explained that well enough. Um, so yeah, we'll be able to extend this backwards, and the more we extend it backwards, we should be able to reach that speed of having these things dropping the items onto the tracks fast enough for them to go straight through. That's the idea. And uh, you can see here I've done a little bit of measuring trying to figure out um, how wide this thing is. And it just so happens it's going to squeeze into this space if we move it down by three tiles. So we go three tiles there 
and uh, if you see where this comes across, three tiles here, there's actually just enough space to squeeze this thing in, and I want it to go directly back um, from the start over here. So what we're actually going to do is move this sort of test arrangement that I've made further forward, and we're going to shift it down by three tiles. So we can't have it nice and neat going through like this into this bit. It will have to kind of wiggle around a bit, but that is no problem at all and it's going to be a nice system which we now have to stop talking about and we have to get it up and online ready to go. Okay it's time to go the system has been set up as you can see this is absolutely crazy I've also just spent a long time uh, looking at all the things we need to do on the rest of our production line and I've got like a plan of action written down all the things we need to do so I'm feeling quite confident about moving forward uh, but I wanted to share this with you quickly and uh, just talk about um, how this is going to work and by share I meant just watching all of these come out onto here I like doing little things like that uh, they're gonna go all the way to the end and they're gonna slowly back up so let's watch that happen before we turn all of this on and just talk about the distribution a little bit so we have a single line of copper coming in uh, this split right here we should ignore because it's not going to be there oh yeah I also dismantled the line going around the side um, by the way so now we're going to be reliant on this and I also let all of this system over here back up so you can see there's materials all here which means we're going to do a little test in the moment as well and look at all of that iron steadily backing up so a single line coming through gets split up here uh, no we, we're ignoring that it gets split up over here and now it's night time that's just brilliant um, so it's half the speed of the um, the actual speed of the red transport belts for either side of this but it also acts as a buffer as well which is important um, because it means when this thing first fires up let's say all of a sudden uh, there's a huge demand for items all of our uh, stuff over here is backed up then when it goes through there's all of this as a buffer now the same thing goes for the iron except it's half as much each one is going to be um, a quarter and you can see here now that it's backed up all the way it's now distributing to the other side of the line and then that's coming through so uh, the iron is significantly going to be um, slower I guess when in high demand or more so that we've got more smelting power than we have stuff coming in so what we might add is a second line of iron and maybe modify the buffer to distribute for two sets of iron which would be interesting um, but yeah it's just just the mechanics behind what we're doing here you've got to think about how many materials are going in and going out etc and it's all interesting stuff uh, but I think we're actually ready to go and it's time for me to stop rambling so let's head over to this side I really hate how dark it is at night it's very bad for videos um, let's put that thing right there to connect it all up and here it goes furnaces are online and immediately they have stopped why have they stopped <laughs> that is the most bizarre thing please don't tell me that these inserters will no longer take I've got a feeling that's what it is they will no longer take will they let's uh, replace this one that's bizarre that is absolutely bizarre I tested this and it worked so I'm really not sure what I've done wrong here huh <laughs> what a strange what a strange like anti-climax that was well this is uh, frustrating look at this if I press F to uh, remove some stuff it's when it's moving through it that it's able to pick it up so we have to have the line continually moving in order for the inserters to pick them up and that just sucks in fact it's only when I pick them up that it does it that's even worse and that means I have to redesign the entire thing doesn't it oh dear okay here we go I've rebuilt the entire system and you can see here we put an extra bit of track on the front there so that the inserter can always take and uh, when I let the ores come through here the system was actually powered up so it started doing its thing which I didn't really want it to but there you go now we're gonna power it together and see it in action so let's place this thing down and off it goes we're gonna extend this onto the back of the line quickly as well and then we're gonna start doing some research all the materials um, come across but look at that it's looking pretty good isn't it fairly fast I feel like it could possibly go faster and you can see here the rate that they're coming out at is not enough to back it up on either side which would be the kind of speed I want to produce it at if we have a look here at the way the ores are coming in it looks like copper is absolutely fine but iron may just be struggling a little bit now remember that this bit over here um, isn't being used and I think this is coming through as fast as possible even though the splitters there maybe it slows it down a little bit actually if you look at the speed this is moving at here yes that is slowing it down so maybe it would keep up uh, with this but it means that we could probably do with more furnaces and they could probably do with upgrades as well but what I would like to do right now is see how our system is going to cope and look how well it's got backed up already 
And now these things are probably going to start storing a lot of iron. Yes, that will go all the way up to 100, and that means that we've got a huge buffer for this stuff right here. But let's start some research and see it in action. So what are we going to do? We're going to do this one right here. I'd like to work towards the second level of power armor, and obviously we're going to start that with some research. So we should now see the system back up. Also, let's have a look at our power consumption here. We don't do this enough, do we? And look at that, they take up quite a lot. It shot up to the top there, although the system was fairly idle. And uh, it seems to be fine. The system is fine. And now it's using the things. It's using all of the things. And we're not seeing too much of a shortage, but it's taking it from out of here. And uh, I'm not really sure what my opinion of this is at the moment. I guess I'm just going to have to keep using the system. So, yeah, we'll let it do its thing. And you can see that the iron coming in is not enough. Actually, we can correct that completely right now because we are no longer using the other system over on the other side. This is now hooked up. We don't need this thing right here. Let's quickly uh, change it over like that. And uh, let's... That's not the way to do it. You press F and re-pick up the things and then it's going through. So now they should be coming through a little bit faster. You can see both sides of the track are moving down here and maybe this will start to uh, to fill back up again. But it's looking okay. It's looking good, isn't it? The system's using stuff and it's still trickling through. So I'm going to keep my eye on things and see how it goes, but it does look promising. Our science production isn't looking too great now. You can see that these potions are starting to run out along here. Same for the green ones and almost the red ones as well. So these over here are definitely going to be getting an upgrade. These ones will probably need speed modules or we could extend it even further. All of these materials are able to keep up, which is cool. And then these ones over here, they did get used, all of them, um, a moment ago. And these are actually crafting them quite slow. And so they're going to get an upgrade. Even though they produce 10 at once, it is relatively slow. So a few upgrades are needed over here. Let's continue um, the research. Let's use some more alien potions right there. And now you're going to see, yeah, a definite shortage going on. So we need to increase that. But this is going to have some backlog as well. And uh, this is kind of what the, uh, the next stage is going to be about now. It's going to be looking at all of the uh, different systems when they're running and seeing where they need to be improved. So all of those could run faster and you can see now electronic circuits have started to back up. So over here we need to upgrade these machines and quite possibly uh, increase the amount of them as well. So it looks like copper is struggling to get through or maybe not quite. I don't know. It's getting down to the uh, bottom ones every other. So we'll probably expand the production of these here and we'll definitely be expanding the production of copper. We'll be doubling this over here as well. And it looks like all of this is keeping up with just doing research at the moment, which is really promising. You can see here the iron is backing up on either sides of the track more so than the other, which is interesting. I think that has something to do with the splitters further down the line and which side they're taking from. So they're more biased to the outside lines. Um, but yeah, things are going well and I'd like to keep... Uh, you know, moving forward and getting it to where our research is just steadily supported by our income of uh, copper and iron over here. And you can see our accumulator capacity is uh, steadily crumbling. It's been going all the way down. So we are not producing enough power uh, for this system right here. So what we're going to do is expand our power usage over on this side. We're going to add some more boilers and that means we're using more coal, which is okay. Uh, but the thing is, I would like to move up to something else in the future, which is if I can remember, uh, solar power. Yes, that's the thing. We are going to work towards solar power. So it's only going to be temporary over here, but I will dismantle all of this stuff and we'll get this thing expanded so we can keep our science going while these accumulators are running out of energy. This whole system is just fascinating. So uh, we've expanded copper wire production, so much so that it's getting backed up along here. So now it's being taken out as fast as it can over here and that's the fastest that it's going to come in right here so you can see the two at the bottom here aren't quite being utilized as much as they could be and that means that we need faster tracks or something else that we've got to upgrade and there's a whole bunch of maths that you can do here you know you can calculate how fast these are going to make them you can calculate that based on the amount of resources coming into your system you know how many copper wires are being produced and uh, I kind of like that, however there's just way too many calculations for me to really keep on track of it. So doing it with this method of observation is pretty cool. But we are now producing um, enough electronic circuits to keep these two replenished. And last time I checked the advanced circuits over the other side were running out. So these ones could do with some more. And it looks like they're making their way over here very slowly. So I'm hoping with the production we have at the moment this will eventually back up and supply all of that. We're still doing tons of research just trying to get through as much of it as I can and we're probably going to run out of it before we make this system too much more uh, optimized or 
optimal, I think would be the word. It's interesting stuff, uh, but we are well into the game now, and our system is doing pretty well. It's just interesting to see how it plays out, and I'd actually appreciate if you guys let me know if you find that stuff kind of interesting, because I just spend a lot of time standing around looking at all of this stuff, and I'm not really sure if it's the most interesting thing for the video. But anyway, we're now going to move on to something else, because... Uh, yeah, this system is up and running. It's doing well. The furnaces are still keeping up, by the way, even with the increased copper demand over here, which is uh, good to see. Although it does look like maybe they're starting to run out a little bit. If they do, we just add more of the back here. I also forgot to show you our power consumption. Let's go and have a look at this. Somewhere back there you can see... Oh, maybe that's the wrong chart. There you go. That's where we increased the power. So this is what we had before we turned the system on. Then we needed more power. And uh, that's the extra amount that we got. We can also press P. I'm not sure if I've ever showed this before. You can see our production levels. I've got a feeling this stuff might be very useful for calculating what's happening in your system without you having to run up and down. But it only shows you five of these at once. And what does clicking on them do? Absolutely nothing by the looks of it. But there you go. We're producing 1,000.1 of those per minute. That is absolutely crazy. I really do like this stuff. It's very cool. And when we head up here, we can see that the electric circuits are coming in enough so that these are always producing. And that means what we want to do is upgrade all of these, which then means that that needs an upgrade as well. But things are kind of throttled by the track speed. But at least we've got things going uh, really well at the moment. And we're just going to keep the research going. It's definitely going slower because not as many science labs are being used. And uh, actually, yeah, I think I said I was going to increase these things over here. What I'm probably going to do is put some speed modules into them. These things are actually quite cheap. Actually, we're not going to put any speed upgrades in these things. You can see that they're being throttled by the production of our advanced circuits at the moment, so we're kind of throttled by the track speed all the way over there, where it couldn't get the uh, copper through fast enough for the electronic circuits at the bottom. So um, that means we're going to have to look into upgrading our tracks, and that comes further down the line. So now we're going to move on to the next project, which is to add uh, the blue circuits. These ones right here, the processing units, and we're going to add that onto our main line, obviously all the way down the other end. And some more research is done. Our blue processing units are now on the line. Here is the setup for how I did that. And you may be wondering why there are two lines of electronic circuits. It's because these things use 20 each. So after my first design, I decided to put a track on either side and two lots of inserters. And you know what? These guys up here... They can't even access them. So there we go. That's going to run a little bit faster now. Um, if we head down to the bottom, you see I've added something else onto the line. We've got laser turrets. Now, they're only going to be on the line temporarily. What I want to do next over here is build uh, a storage area somewhere. And you can see uh, that we need to expand this wall over in that direction, which means fighting more baddies. But here's the setup for that. Nothing too much to talk about there. And I think what we'll do is move back down this way because I want to show you something with the uh, electronic circuits. Now these things right here, I need to pick some up on my way. Uh, these are being used by pretty much everything left, right and centre. So we need to produce more of them and we need to move them around a little bit quicker as well. And at the moment their movement speed is throttled by these belts and I'm thinking about upgrading them. So if we go back here and if you look on my hotbar as well, you'll notice these. And um, where are we? This is where we're making the electronic circuits and the copper wires are coming in at this speed right here. If we upgrade the splitters to the next level, they actually put them in just a tiny bit faster than the regular ones do. So now I've swapped them over, you can see they're coming through faster. It may be a subtle change, but it is a change indeed. So they make a slight difference, and I'm not sure if it's going to get any faster if we are to, uh, to change the rest of these to the next level, which is interesting stuff, because at the moment what I'm thinking is what we actually need is... Uh, is another line of copper coming in here, or, you know, just more coming through in general, because it's all getting used up and hardly any of it is getting backed up. So there's no room for more of these, really. This is kind of the uh, maximum production we can do. What we could also do, actually, is kind of have um, another set of these over here that exclusively push them around into this set, which might be the solution we're looking for. So I had it all wrong. This is the way to do it. We now have uh, three of these tracks going uh, through the middle here so we can get more copper cables onto this thing. It seems to be going faster. It's kind of caught up with itself now. So these two at the end, once again, are not too active. So we're going to have to increase the amount that are coming out of here by the looks of it. But if you have a look here, this track is pretty full. So we might actually benefit from just running that straight over there for now. And now I think it's going to flow onto that side a fair bit more, it looks like, doesn't it? So now these ones are going to be used and not that one. Uh, but if we increase the production here, then that should be able to cope with it over here as well. 
So we did quite a bit this episode. I planned on doing a lot, lot more. And I'm thinking now, hey, let's do all of this in between episodes. Next episode, I have a load of cool stuff to show you. And as of right now, a load of stuff backed off on the line. That's because we ran out of oil. So I've gone for this stuff over here. You can see the pollution spreading out from it. We might get attacked at the wall over here. And initially, I was thinking about this spot down here. So maybe we'll go attack some baddies and secure that area for the future. Uh, but I've just finished it finished piping it down into the bottom of our storage tank so we are now producing petroleum again and everything on the line um, should get back into it so that's going to be it for this episode of factorio as always if you've enjoyed it please do leave a like it's always appreciated and i will catch you in the next episode